What's up everyone, my name is Nigark and welcome to a new series. We are going to be playing Monstro Battle Tactics. So it is a tactics game, it's like Fire Emblem if you've ever played that. And I know there's another game that is very similar to it. You basically select the unit, move it, you do all that cool stuff. And uh, I know there's another game similar to it, I just can't remember what it's called. But the game does have an intro, and it's pretty funny, so I am going to play the intro, and I'm just going to shut up for all of it. I think you'll enjoy it. Ludus is a peaceful land where ancient terror beasts and humans somehow coexist in perfect harmony. Absolute bliss and peace govern their lives and any reasonable person would consider Ludus a pretty nifty place to live, terror beasts and all. But such joy and laughter can never last forever, because that would be boring. So, once every few hundred years or so, a predictably unpredictable astrological phenomenon occurs wherein some angry people in the sky, from a not-sky-at-all dimension called Terror, come and shred their eternal peace to pieces. Who knows why? They're probably picked on or something. Whenever they arrive, a fleet of floating islands are brought along. Their fields, divided into conveniently perfect squares, make up the battlefields where the humans and the ancient terror beasts battle for the amusement of these angry sky people. It's pretty darn awful. The peaceful terror beasts don't really enjoy being terrifying, and the puny humans don't really enjoy being puny. But when the alternative is getting sky peopled to death, it's bad. The result is friends killing friends and innocent terror beasts alike, hoping for the battles to end and for peace to return to the land. Okay, so I thought I thought that was pretty cute. I thought that was that was worth the like two minutes that it is. But today I'm going to be going through the beginner and like introduction things, and after that I will be going through the human thing and possibly monster thing. But if you don't care about learning the game, then just skip to the next video. That'll be where I start actually playing the things. Their coming was a predictable surprise to everyone. For fortunately for the people of Ludus, their thirst for death was initially small, and thus the first battle seemed to be nothing more than an introduction to what seemed to an introduction to what was about to come. So I can select a unit. You can see where I can move, and you can see where I'd be able to attack. And once my turn is over, hit space. Then it goes the monster's turn. Then I can come over here, hit space, monster's gonna go. Now if I mouse over the monster, I can see how where it can move and its predicted path. So I can predict that it's gonna come here, and I don't want to move into it, so it's gonna move there, and then I will move up and I will hit it and kill it. Boom. Introduction quest one, done. Nailed it, easy, play next mission. Uh, defense restores. Sky gods have this weird tendency to pretend the whole thing is a part of something that actually makes sense. How else to explain the bonfires and people situated around them as if they were just ambushed by the monsters? So my victory condition is to destroy all the monsters. So if I look at this guy, if I click on him, you can see a stats window over here. He has 1 health and 3 movement. He also has an attack range of 1, a damage of 1, and a defense of 2. So whenever he attacks, he's going to do one damage. He only has one health, so if he takes one damage, he will die. But he has two defense, and this restores at the beginning of every, of every turn. But basically, I if I hit him, it's going to take away from the defense first, and then it will go into his health. So these guys that I have, if I um, click somewhere else, you can see they only have an attack of one, and they have no defense. So if I move both of them up and attack, he, he's not going to die because its defense is going to recharge. So if I go boom, boom, its defense is down. This guy, however, has a defense of 1 and an attack of 2. So he'll be able to take out that nasty monster no problem. So he's going to move over. He's going to smack my guy. Go ahead, hit him. 
But if I move him up, he's going to take out the defense, and you are going to take out the one health. Pretty simple. Pretty, pretty simple. Traps are dangerous. Jack was taking care of his farm animals when sky gods came from, er, the sky, and snatched him and his friend, Gary. Traps. My grandpa was a trapper. Boomed a voice from above when the duo was hurtled down onto the corner of a really cold island. So, if I stop on a trap, it will trigger. If I go past a trap, it will not trigger. So if I end my turn here, the monster is going to end his turn on this trap, and he will be stunned for a round. And then if I come over here, and end, you can see he was stunned for a round. And then if I come down here, let's look at his path, he's going to try to come this way. And also, I can't fight this thing one-on-one, -on -one because my guy has just one attack. He has one defense and three health. But, um, it's saying that there is a pattern to monsters. If they have a choice, they will go to the left or right of your people, rather than the top or bottom. So if I move here, he won't try to go to the bottom, he will go to the left. And that'll hit a spike trap that does 8 damage. So if I just end my turn right there, he will go up and he will take that 8 damage, and it'll be dead, and I'll be good. Pretty sweet. Ready, steady, go. No one really knew where the brains came from. There were, lar there were large terror beasts out there, but none of them even close to the sheer enormity required to produce a brain the size of a horse. One thing was sure, Jack had no time to think. So I can destroy walls like this. It's a fake wall. Boom. And then I have to end my turn because I don't have anything else there. Go there. And basically, I have to kill this thing in less than seven turns, is what the game is telling me. I may as well attack that because it's the end of my turn, and there's no enemies here to kill me. But I think going through here might be too slow. I think it's faster to, um, to go this route. So let's do that. Pretty good. Abandoned Island. It's never funny when you have claustrophobia, and an omnipotent being throws you into a very tiny room. On the other hand, it's easier to put things in the perspective when it keeps you safe from the rage of two very mushy shrooms. Just remember the Sky God's words. Let thy friendeth die, and thou shalt end up a broken twig. Or, or whatever. So, if I lose any unit, I lose the game. So, we have a ranger here. And these guys move pretty slow, they have a movement of three. And I can predict that he's gonna go there, so I'm just gonna end my turn there. You will attack him again, and you will start moving over here, and his movement is gonna go right there. And then we will attack him. Will your movement be in range? It will not, so I can hit Q and undo as well. Where will his movement end up right there? Eh, eh, we'll just do it right here. This should be fine. I should be able to find a way back over here. There we go. Pretty good. By the way, if you're curious how I'm doing these so fast, I did already play through all of them. All of the introduction things. Just, just so I wouldn't have to, like, muddle around with it. Okay, shuffle. Sky gods have a knack of... A knack for breaking families. Minty was an adopted son of Archerides ever since he was a little cow. He grew big and muscular and became an excellent woodcutter while his father only ever got older. Granted, that was that wall on wheels would give him a certain advantage, but how well can a bow fare against an axe? So, there's basically a mobile wall unit here that it can move, and I can move through it, but enemies cannot. So if I move here, he will move there, and if I just end my turn like that, he shouldn't be able to attack me, and I can attack him, and then move the wall there, so he can't get through that. Right? And then I don't know, can I hit him from here? I can't, so let's undo that. What happens if I just move this here? He's gonna move right back into that spot, and won't be able to attack me? And I'll be able to attack him. Move that there. You kinda kinda get in the pattern here. I'm doing more damage each time because he has a defense of two, but I have a, uh, an attack of three. So move this on back. Honestly, I could have moved up and killed him that turn, but it's fine. 
pretty good. We're almost almost done with the tutorials. There's only uh, one more after this one. Never stop. Jack already had enough. He had to kill his friend, and now Sky and now Sky Gods just said a word, and lo and behold, he can run faster. Did anyone ask for his opinion? No. He considered accusing them of being ego egoistic. But with all the conflict going on, no one would probably notice his dissatisfaction with what he was going through. So, he's gonna have a little icon by him. That is a specialization. So that little thing is a specialization. Specializations modify unit statistics. There are eight different specializations in the game, and a unit can have up to three of them. Just don't stand around, run for the brain, or else the shrooms will kill you. Um, I think there's a button for it. It's like specializations, it has a little bit here about it. So, um... Where is it? Foot. Increase the number of moves a unit can make per turn by one. So this is a pretty pretty easy one. It just wants you to run straight forward. And I love how fast it goes through the enemy turns, too. I think that's amazing. Because one thing that really bothers me in, like, Fire Emblem is just how slow it goes unless you're holding a button. So we call the brain victory. And then there's one more. Hack and Slack. A tiny army of goos has been deployed on the island, cut by numerous rivers. Because of the high altitude, they have melted a little and stuck to the surface. It annoyed Sky Gods a lot, so they procured a brain as the real target and snatched dissatisfied Jack to clear the mess, taking the recently granted super speed away from him. So this is kind of a puzzle thing, but basically um, if I end my turn next to any of these, they can attack me. But they have this little lock here saying they cannot move, right? But um, if I were to like walk right here, one of I would be able to kill one, but one of them would be able to attack me. And same like down here or down here or right here, is I have to I have to go the appropriate way, otherwise they will be able to hit me, and I don't want that. Thankfully, I know the appropriate way. It's almost like I've done this once before. Just end the turn there. Come right here and smack this one. And in my turn, there we go. Right there, an attack, and... Boop. Right there. And then we just skip past these and go to the boss. We did it! So that's the tutorial for the game. In the next video, I am going to be, um... Play next mission? Is that just gonna throw me into the- yeah, okay, it's gonna throw me right back into it. So I'm gonna go to the title screen, and next time we will be starting on the- what is it? The human- human campaign? Yeah, we're gonna start on the human campaign next time. So, now you know how to play Monstro Battle Tactics. It comes out on December 3rd, it is gonna be on Steam. I don't remember how much it's gonna cost, I never remember, I always forget to look. But so far it's pretty interesting, and I, I'm a huge fan of tactics games, so I'm hoping to get all the way through it, and maybe even all the way through the monster campaign as well. I don't know how long they are. But my name is Nagark, this is Monstro Battle Tactics, and thank you for watching.